Smells, vents, hoses, burping, the stinky slinky. This episode, we're talking about everything you need to know about your black and gray tanks. This is the RV Miles Podcast. This podcast is sponsored by L.L. Bean, who invite you to simply step outside this summer. With expert tips and advice, L.L. Bean can help you get more out of every moment outdoors. Here's a tip. Set yourself up for easy backyard adventures by leaving a tote bag with the essentials right by the door, sunscreen, bug spray, and a few hats or pairs of sunglasses. Now you'll never need to search your house to find them. For more fun ideas, easy how-tos, and inspiring stories, visit llbean.com slash guide. Welcome to episode number 243 of RV Miles. I'm Jason. And I'm Abby. And we are two full-time travelers who have been crisscrossing North America on one epic road trip since 2016. Here at RV Miles, we talk all things RV and outdoors, from industry news to travel destinations, our national parks, and today, your black tank. You know, every week you you mention that we're two full-time travelers, and I I was just realizing that like, oh, well, you counted us. (laughs) That's good. There's one, two. I <laughs> and can, it's accurate. I, <laughs> I am capable of doing basic math. <laughs> uh, I wanted to kick off the show today with a little update on a news story that was in our most recent news episode. Mm-hmm. Uh, I didn't really get to get as far into it as I would like, but I've now been able to talk to somebody from Keystone RV Company. So you may have heard the story, if you didn't hear it from us, you've heard elsewhere, that (laughs) Keystone has laid off some employees. They're closing two plants down uh, and laying off some employees. And I tried to put it in a little context in the news video, but I want to add a little bit more here, uh, now that I've actually been able to talk to reps from Keystone. There is a lot of doom and gloom out there about how these two plant closures at Keystone uh, means really uh, despair for the RV industry. Feels almost um, like an apocalypse, doesn't it? There are some people who think that Keystone is closing altogether. Uh, let me say this. First of all, Keystone is one of the biggest RV companies out there. They sell lots and lots of trailers, perhaps more trailers than any other individual nameplate. And uh Keystone is going to be laying off about 300 uh, plus employees. And that's that's awful for those people. And I certainly don't want to minimize that by any means. But to put it into some context, Keystone has over 50 plants and they're closing two of them. Wow. They have over 7,000 employees Mm -hmm. and they're laying off 350 of them. So about 5%, if my math is is correct right there. So... (laughs) You have to understand what's been going on in the RV industry in the last couple of years. This is going to be a slower year for RVs. There's nothing disastrous happening yet that might change if the economy gets really terrible. But right now, the stock market seems to be holding out. Um, jobs seem to be holding out. And, and those are two real big things that affect, that affect luxury purchases like RVs. So as long as that keeps holding out, I think the industry is going to be fine. But the bigger context is here is that the RV manufacturers were hiring lots and lots of employees to uh, make a lot of RVs over the last two years. And it's, it is a, uh, an industry that cycles up and down. Mm-hmm. They were actually expecting a, a lower year in 2020, right? Remember, yes. it, it was uh, things were cycling down at the beginning. Yeah, I do remember that. And uh, I, I think when you step back and look at it with those kinds of numbers, you realize that this, this is a long way off from like worrying about whether your Keystone warranty is going to be so serviced by somebody. Are you <laughs> saying that I don't need to go check with my dealer and make sure that they're okay? Yes. Is yes. that what you're saying? So thank you, Jason, for that RV Miles wisdom. So we I, appreciate it. I, and in addition, you know, I, I also mentioned that the sort of the Keystone Laredo lineup had sort of disappeared from the website earlier this year. Mm -hmm. And what Keystone has told us now is that they have essentially replaced the 
aging Laredo line with the new Arcadia line. And that's really what that's all about. So one of these plants that closed, at least one of one of the two, uh, was specifically for Laredo. Um, and they sort of ramped up production on Arcadia. They don't need Laredo anymore. So this seems to be an evolution of a brand as well as what we have all expected, which is the leveling out. It's it's time to have a little bit of a plateau. It's a return to a bit of normalcy. Yes. And so don't freak out. There could be disasters There's... after the return to normalcy. Sure. But we got to start there. We're not back down to normal yet. Yeah. Let's take every <laughs> bit of information and the facts before we make any other apocalyptic calls. All right. Uh, you want to talk about our, our little... Sure. Quick jaunt to Ikea this week. <laughs> sure. It was quite uh, spontaneous. So we are still in the Quad Cities area. And I think we have talked in the past that we had been entertaining, wanting to take the table and the four chairs that are in our kitchen slide out that after almost a year, they're just not working for us. And we really wanted to create a space that would allow us to have school time a little bit easier and also maybe a little bit more dedicated workspace for Jason and I. So we have been talking about this and, you know, we knew we were close to an Ikea. I mean, it's two and a half hours from us, but I think anyone who... <laughs> it's not close. <laughs> I think anyone who gets within a, a two and a half hour distance of Ikea starts thinking it's about drive. going to Ikea. So we had been on the website on Saturday morning, but we had a bunch of work to do. So we dove in, got all our work done, and it was like 3.30. You closed up the laptop. You're like, I'm done writing the news for this week. And I looked at you and I said, hey, you want to drive to Ikea? And uh, within 15 minutes, we had three kids loaded up in the truck and we were making the two and a half hour drive to Ikea on a Saturday. The uh, GPS said we weren't going to get in until 630. So we thought that's perfect. We're going to go to the restaurant. We're going to get something to eat. Everyone loves the Ikea restaurant. And then Ikea is open till nine. We knew what we wanted. We'd get it and it'd be a late night. We're not going to roll back until midnight. We thought this is fun and spontaneous. And every once in a while, we like to do the really spontaneous kinds of things. Like a lot of our decisions sometimes, uh, some of our best and some of our worst decisions are made like this. Uh, so <laughs> and this, I think, fell somewhere in the middle. So we drove. Well, it was successful. It was very successful. We haven't had a long drive like that in a few weeks, which I know sounds silly, but I think when you live this lifestyle full time, you get into a rhythm of your life, including drive days. We should say we actually, we hadn't been in the RV for a few weeks too. We've now moved yeah. back into the RV after staying with family for a, a few weeks here. That's so absolutely that's right. So part of what spurred this because we had yes. already pulled the table and chairs out. <laughs> yeah. So we just had a big empty hole where nobody could sit. We and, needed to fill it. Well, and you know what happens when you have this big empty space, it starts to become the catch all for yes. everything. And so it was just starting to become a pile of stuff everywhere. And so we had been in the, we're at a county park here in the Iowa Davenport area and we decided to make this drive. We get to, <laughs> this is where I said it falls in the middle ground because we get to Ikea and it's about 6.45 ish because we did stop for fuel on the Iowa side before we got in because we were driving to Bolingbrook, Illinois and we were like, we're not going to fill up. It's literally, I think, a 80 cent difference between filling up in Iowa and filling up in Illinois. So we get there about 6.45. We're like, let's go get some food. We go upstairs to the restaurant. Uh, I start to notice that someone who works there is like putting all these chairs up on the tables. And I'm like, well, what's, what's going on here? Restaurant closed at 7. And they had stopped making food. Uh, so we had three really hungry kids um, with no food. So they promptly started fighting with each other in the showcase section of Ikea. And I mean like fighting with each other, chasing each other down to get their point across because they were so hangry. So we're sitting here. Now, no, I want to clarify. They're not like beating each other no, up no, when no, you no, say no. fighting with each other. I'm sorry. They're verbally arguing. Yes. Our kids don't, um, at least <laughs> knock on wood right now, they don't physically go at each other, but they were verbally arguing with each other loudly in the showcase section of Ikea. So we had to do this whole Ikea shop uh, in two hours, looking at what we wanted. 
with really hungry people. We were all hungry. Uh, we did it. We got what we wanted. Everyone, they were troopers. An almond cake was purchased for the drive home. And then we went over and ate dinner at Bar Louie's. So by this time, it's like 9 o'clock, and we're going over to a Bar Louie, and we're going to eat dinner before we get back on the road. We should have just got fast food. We, this was so, a mistake. Such a mistake. You know, I think anyone who's worked in the service industry knows that on the weekends, a manager loves nothing more in a restaurant than to cut the floor right after the dinner rush. So and they can save that minimum wage yes, that they're paying those servers. They're not even paying minimum. You don't even get minimum wage it's as like, a well, server. The, the it's server the, minimum wage is like yes, $3 an hour. Yes. I'm sure it's a little bit more now, but uh, it was when I left Bennigan's. Um, I was making like four twenty-five an hour plus tips. Um, so it's very clear the floor has been cut and the manager is like, I'm going to expo. I'm going to help run food. I'm going to see people. It is a pa it's pandemonium and they're all doing their very best. It's a skeleton crew. The place is packed because it's one of the few places open for late night grub. It is an hour and a half before we get out of there. Let so me, it is now 10.30. This, this should have made it to my black <laughs> tank, but I'm going to put this here. If you are a oh. restaurant and you make kids' meals, stop garnishing them with stuff stop. that parents have to pick off. Nobody wants, no child wants your chopped parsley. I, as an adult, I, really don't care about the chopped parsley on that, my food. Yeah. I know it makes it look better, I guess. But when you make a pepperoni pizza for a child, do not sprinkle it with chopped parsley. Not in this one didn't just have chopped parsley. It had jardinera peppers on it. Yeah. Come I'm on. so glad you said that because I can't ever say that name right. I always want to say Gajardine. <laughs> <laughs> and so I never, I always just say, when they ask me, like, if I'm at a Portillo's or something, I say, do you want peppers? I'm always like, no, no, don't You could them. just say peppers. I know, but I, I'm so intimidated by it because all I want to say is Gaharne. <laughs> so anyway, we, it was 1030 before we get out of this Bar Louie and we still have a two and a half hour <laughs> <laughs> it was a blast though. We loved driving. Lo it was a great drive. I had great. a fun time listening to stuff with yeah, you. Yeah, we were listening to one of our favorite podcasts. Uh, the kids were doing their own thing. Everyone just was chilling. So let's say what we got though. Yeah, so we did. We bought a desk. We bought a couple of stools for the desk. We bought that really popular utility cart. You've probably seen it around the three tier one that you can get in different colors. Um, then we also bought this really cool like storage container for the living room that's round and you can put things into it and it's got a lid that'll come off and it's a it's nice It's like a round coffee table that's actually a basket. Yeah, and we thought this is really perfect for blankets and things but also it will double as uh, you know because our family loves to play games. This will be great for uh, being able to play board games or card games in the living room, which is normally where we like to play games in this big open space. So we get all these things. We also got, I want to add, we also got more of the suction cup hooks. Oh, yes. Because that Love is those. one of the best things for RVers to get at Ikea, at least yeah. that we found, is these, there are hooks that have a suction cup on them that is super strong. We have them on the outside of our RV and have, they've been there for a year now and yeah. have not come off. They are, we use them in the bathroom too, but if you have a fiberglass slick sided RV, they're great for like a place to hang bicycle helmets, a, uh, I have one for my outdoor cooking apron, stuff like yeah. that. Yeah. So I'm going to actually make a short little reel on them this week and Ethan's going to help me do it. Um, so if you are not following us on Facebook or on the RV Miles Instagram page and you want to kind of see what we're talking about, just head over there and follow us and then you'll be able to see a visual of how these work. So we had all this stuff. It was about one-ish when we arrived home, uh, realized that they closed the gates at the campground. <laughs> Which they had. We've arrived late a couple times before here, and, and the gates have not been not closed. not closed. But luckily, there was a parking lot right outside the gate, <laughs> and it was only like a three-minute walk into the RV. Yeah, so <laughs> by this time, I was 
So tired. I think I was the only one who actually truly started falling asleep on the drive home. And so we walked. We were able to walk in. It was about 1.30. Um, and I thought, well, we're all going to get ready to bed. And we've almost made this without anyone melting down. Uh, and then I melted down. And then I got really grumpy. And I was like, we were so close. And then I was the one that I melted down. I was tired. I was ex- so exhausted, and I was not here for the fact that Henry's headphones were dead. I was like, <laughs> I don't care. I got I to gotta go to bed. Um, so we did. We replaced the – we took that table out, and now in it we have a desk with this utility cart and the two stools, and it makes that space look huge. I mean, it looks so big in that kitchen now. Yeah. And it and it's it works. It's so yeah. much more functional. We ha- Is that a word? Nope. Nope, not a word. Functional. That's a word. Gahard <laughs> Deli? I don't even know. What is the... I think I keep wanting to call it the chocolate place. What's the chocolate place? You're thinking of Ghirardelli chocolates. <laughs> Jardinera peppers. So I'm trying to say Jardinelli. Like, I can't I can't. Do I it. might even be saying Jardinera I, wrong. I, I don't, don't know. know. I don't know. Functionable. Like, it's just what... It, it's uh, hitting my mind. But don't be afraid of... Taking things out, moving things around yeah. in your RV. I see lots of people really concerned about things like resale value. And that's not, we can put the table back in whenever we want yeah. to. We, you know, we took our toilet out for our composting toilet. We can put the old toilet back in. It's your space, you know, do what you want with and it. And that's because we should say though, that that is because we have a storage unit. We have a small storage unit and yeah. we do go and put those things in there. Now, yeah. some people take stuff out and they just get rid of it. The only thing that we changed out and did not save was the RV mattress because it's crunk. A lot so, of people would call our storage unit large. Yeah, I, yeah, I mean, medium. it's not, it's it's medium. Me, yeah, it's not a five by five. It's a little bit bigger than five by five. I think it's like five by seven or something. <laughs> Abby. <laughs> 10 by 10. It's like 10 by 12. <laughs> <laughs> I can do basic math. I cannot assess the size of a space. If it was... if it <laughs> All right. I remember we used to have a 5x5. Five five. That was, it was much... 5x5 five five is a closet. Yeah. That was much smaller. <laughs> this is like 10 by 12. All right. I'm sure. Gonna, I'm going to help you out of here. We're going we're gonna to dump out of this segment. <laughs> and we're going to uh, take a break to listen to some messages from our lovely sponsors. And we'll be right back to talk about tanks, Abby's favorite subject. Oh, I can't wait. We'll be right back. <laughs> right back. Looking for a one-stop shop for a variety of RV products and replacement parts? eTrailer.com has you covered with a variety of RV items, including towing options, interior accessories, replacement parts, storage, and more. But it doesn't stop with RVs. eTrailer.com even offers automobile accessories, sports activities, recreation, and more. If you need it, they've got it. Shop online from the comfort of your home and receive free shipping in the lower 48 for purchases over $99. Head over to eTrailer.com slash RV Miles to start shopping today. That's eTrailer.com slash RV Miles. We're back and it's time to talk about tanks. Not the level of our tanks. This is not our fresh tank black tanks discussion. This is our fresh tank black tanks discussion. Real tanks. (laughs) This is real tanks. We're going to talk about uh, your sewage and dealing with your sewage and the mosquitoes that are flying around my my face. Whoa, where did they come? There were none a minute ago. Anyway, this uh, is what happens when we go on location. <laughs> when we take this podcast it, out of the RV, it, we're we're sitting out in a field right now, and there are skeeters. Uh, um, the first thing I want to start with, though, is don't be afraid of your tanks. Okay, I think there are a lot of people out there that they try to never use their black tank at all. They don't use their RV toilet. Yikes! Or they just use it for number one, not number two, and that's fine if that's what you want to do. But not if you are that regular and organized, hey. It's on you. <laughs> well, okay. you know, and I think a lot of people are in very small RVs. And in that case, they're like, well, and I'm at a state park campground and I'm trying mm-hmm. to keep the uh, tank from filling. It, by all means. By all means. Uh, go use, go use the bathhouse, whatever you want to do. But if don't be um, afraid of the smells and of the dumping of it because it's all really, really not too bad. Um, and it is okay that stuff goes in those tanks. So mm-hmm. uh, you can be the, the person that only puts clean, down, clean water down your kitchen sink and wipes off every plate before you wash them. That's fine too. But, but, but again, I would argue that there is, it will never be 100% it, clean it, water. It it's yeah. never. It will always continue to carry yeah. something 
from your dirty dishes. It's gray water. It shouldn't be dumped on the ground ever. I don't care how clean you say it is. I will argue this till the day I die. I made I made the mistake of drinking from a, a metal container with <laughs> ice in it. So if you're getting some clinking going on, um, but I wanted to start by giving an overview of like what how the tanks look and what they're like because I think a lot of people don't realize what the tanks in your RV are actually like, and they are they are very sort of thin, like height wise. Mm-hmm. And long and wide rectangular boxy boxy shape. So, um, if you imagine sort of like a uh, like an IKEA box, a flat pack IKEA box, there it's only go. like six inches thick, but is very wide and very long. That's kind of what your tanks look like. So when your sensors are off a little bit and stuff like that, a lot of it has to do with the fact that it's just long and it's not always level and stuff like that. The the black tank, which is where your toilet sewage goes is generally located right underneath the toilet so usually the toilet has a straight down drain that dumps right into the black tank your gray tank could be located elsewhere you might have multiple gray tanks you might have multiple black tanks in our rv we have a gray tank a black tank and a galley tank which is also gray water uh galleys a a galley means kitchen if you're not familiar Uh, but sometimes they separate out the galley tank because technically kitchen sink water in a lot of jurisdictions doesn't count as legal gray water and in some places you can legally dump gray water on the ground we don't recommend it but there are campgrounds out there um public campgrounds that have drains that are specifically for gray water, Mm -hmm. for instance. And that gray water is probably feeding back into the water table. So uh, that's where I would be careful about dumping a galley tank in that sort of situation. So these tanks generally have their own valve that opens and closes to dump the sewage out of them. Sometimes those valves combine into one outlet. So a lot of RVs have one outlet where they're black and their gray tank go, so you can hook up one sewer hose. Bigger RVs are gonna have multiple outlets. So like ours has one for the black tank and one for the two gray tanks, which is a little awkward because you like to sort of dump the clean sewage out after you dump the black yeah, sewage out. Yeah. But a fact um, I learned last week that we can't do that with ours. The tanks are also all vented to your roof. So there is a pipe that goes from your from your tank all the way up to your roof to a, a an air vent up there and that keeps like suction and and uh, and vacuums from forming and it also helps get rid of the smell, right? Sometimes the bathroom sink will be plumbed into the black tank, especially if you have two bathrooms. That's just sort of an ease of of, uh, manufacturing sort of thing. And sometimes that's helpful just to get some more water into that second black tank because sometimes that second black tank isn't attached to a gray Mm -hmm. tank. So it just helps sort of get more water in there to dump out. So let's talk about hooking up at the campsite. So you have a sewer hose, right? Mm -hmm. People call it the stinky slinky. It's like the adult version. (laughs) We like to have uh, several sections of hose so that I can reach wherever the the sewer connection is at a campsite because it it varies, right? So I I like to have a 15-foot and a 10-foot section. We've recently just got a Y so we can connect our several sections together and add a different one. But sewer hoses are expensive. Wow. They are expensive right now. But we do recommend that you do get a good one. We use the Rhino hoses by Camco. There are other ones out there. The Titan hose is good as well. But definitely, if you're going to be doing this a lot, get the upgraded hoses because they do sort of fall apart and leak the cheaper ones yeah it's it's not it's not fun and that's a definite stinky slinky the the more durable they are the better they're going to hold up to somebody stepping on them or to uv rays all that sort of stuff some people use a sewer hose support we talked about this last week Mm -hmm. Uh, some campgrounds require a sewer hose support so this is sort of an accordion like thing there are other different ways people do it some people do a um, a self-made sort of thing with a gutter but we use the accordion style uh, sewer hose support that you put under your hose and it sort of gently rakes it down toward the outlet and it also keeps it up off the ground and the ground, if you're, say you're monthly camping somewhere, 
the ground and the mud and the dirt uh, it really does actually cause some damage to your mm -hmm. hose. So it is nice to get it up off the ground. It also sort of helps with like the lawn mowing and stuff like that. You want to make sure a lawn mower is not going to hit your sewer hose. Yeah. That's a bad idea. <laughs> um, at the connection itself, where your sewer hose connects to the sewer, sometimes, usually, there is a thread in that connection. So I use the elbow from Camco, the Camco Rhino elbow, that has threads in it, so I can actually screw that in and get a positive connection. Sometimes, you don't get threads there, however. So it is nice to have uh, a weight of some sort to hold down your sewer hose so it doesn't pop out. That's a bad thing. I, yes. <laughs> and some places require that, or they require you to have a donut, which is sort of like a, a, a rubber seal that, that makes sure that there are no gases coming out. Uh, if there's With the threads, it's not necessary, but if there's no threads, then you might need something like that. Um, so it's real simple to do, though. No worries about connecting it at all. Just connect it up. If your sewer connections to your RV or underneath your slide, it's convenient to do that before you put your slides out for obvious reasons. I always forget and end up crawling on <laughs> yes. my knees in gravel and that hurts. <laughs> I've gotten really good about putting my knees on like our power cable or our water hose and like balancing on that so I'm not putting my knees in the gravel. <laughs> the next time this happens, I'm going to have to come out and catch some film of this because I haven't seen you do this. Yeah. So that sounds... <laughs> <laughs> I'd really like to see that in action. So uh, so once you're hooked up, you always want to keep the black tank closed, right? Yes. You never yes. want to leave that black tank valve open because if you can imagine, if you have that black tank valve open and, and the stuff coming from the toilet is going straight down into the sewer, what's happening in that long, wide, not very tall tank is that the solids are just dropping in and the liquid is running out over and over and you get stuff built up and people often call it the poop pyramid but it's not enough space for it to really be a pyramid really you get getting a little a clump. pile of stuff and so that's why it is so important that a you leave the black tank closed uh, and b you use lots and lots of water in your black tank when you flush your toilet you should be holding that pedal down for a good 30 seconds especially if you've used toilet paper to to get that additional water in there mm -hmm. to help stuff flow and break down easily. And there are tricks that you can do, tips that are out there. If you're boondocking and you're trying to conserve water, one of those is, of course, to not put the toilet paper into the black tank during that time it's the can... toilet paper that really needs the breakdown yes yeah it it really is and you know there's the debate about the rv specific toilet paper versus you know a scott one ply that you can go out and buy we have done tests on this numerous other rv industry people have done tests on this a one ply is a one ply is a one ply. And we have been using Scott or the off brand version of a Scott one ply for years. If it's, make sure it says septic safe. Always needs to say septic yeah. safe. But almost every one ply yes. says septic yeah. safe. <laughs> yes. So, but again, you know, if you're at a state park and you're going to be there for a long period of time, if you're going to be boondocking, there are ways that you can not use as much water in the black tank and try to, to elongate how long it's going to last. And one of those is to just limit the toilet paper or utilize, if you're at a state park, utilize you want to utilize the bathhouse for certain actions. But avoid, av avoid, avoid, avoid filling that black tank up with more solids than liquids. Yes. You really want as much liquid yeah. as possible in there. Um, you can use drop-ins or uh, liquid chemicals to help mitigate the smell in your black tank. They do not break stuff down really. I mean, there are options out there that will break stuff down if you have a, if you've sort of, if you've sort of created a problem, Abby's, Abby's Sorry, swapping, swapping the mosquitoes off of me. Sorry. But, but the chemicals really are not for breaking your sewage down. They really are just to sort of cover up the smell. So if you're gonna use them, use something formaldehyde free because formaldehyde and some other chemicals that are in some of these products 
uh, kill bacteria, which is how they get rid of the smell. Uh, but killing the bacteria is bad for the septic tank that your sewage is all going into at the campground. Mm -hmm. Uh, it needs bacteria in order to break all that stuff down. Never pour bleach down your toilet. Never pour bleach. Your Please urine don't. has a large amount of ammonia in it. Bleach and ammonia react together to form noxious gases, and you don't want that to happen. You can like wipe your toilet down with bleach if you need to. That's that's okay. Um, but don't like pour bleach in the in the seal or anything like that. We recommend you don't use any sort of caustic chemicals on the toilet unless it is a ceramic toilet. If you have a plastic toilet, you want to just use soap and water, like Dawn dish soap or something like that. Yeah. What happens is caustic chemicals, like if, even like a wipe, like a, if you have like a, a bleach wipe or something mm -hmm. like that, they break down the gloss surface of the toilet. And when you break down that gloss surface, stuff sticks to it. Yeah, there are a lot of plant-based cleaning products out there that you can buy that are safe to use on pretty much a lot of your um, bathroom, even in your tub and in the shower and things like that. Because there's also, you know, I think particular cleaning products they don't want you using in the shower as well. So familiarize yourself with that and then go and look at the cleaning products that you can use that can be environmentally friendly, but also safe and effective and do the job. And then when it's time to dump, we're going to talk about dumping in a second, but when it's time to dump, try not to dump your black tank until it is at least three mm -hmm. quarters full. You want that big whoosh of all that water going out yep. at the same time. You can always add extra water though. So if your tank's not full, you want to dump now, add water to it before you dump. There has been many a time when we owned our travel trailer and we just had a standard RV toilet in there that on travel day, I would be standing in the bathroom just holding down that foot pedal. They and do make letting... a wedge you can sit in there for yeah, that purpose. Yeah, yeah. We didn't <laughs> purchase that. Um, so and let... just letting that water run because it's a kind of a pain in the butt and it takes a little yeah. bit of time. But you know what's even more of a pain in the butt is when you don't put enough water in your tank and then well, you go to try to dump it. And you it. feel like you're putting gallons and gallons and gallons and gallons in there. But it actually, it might take a couple minutes for one gallon yeah. to go down. Yeah. Let's talk about gray tank care. Uh, there's a big debate between a lot of RVers about whether you can leave your gray tank open at a campground or that you should leave it closed while you're parked in a campground with a sewer hookup. We tend to do a mix. We try to keep it closed often, but if it's sort of like a lot of people are showering, then we keep yes. it open and I might accidentally leave it open or purposefully leave it open for a couple days or and then I close it for a couple days what have you sometimes you accidentally close it and we all think it's open yeah and then, then it starts coming back up then to it's shower. Like, what is this <laughs> yeah but generally you're if you have a separate gray and galley tank you're pretty much always okay leaving your gray tank open mm -hmm. uh, if you have a, a galley only tank that is just your kitchen sink and you put lots of food stuffs down your sink it is probably best to keep that one closed so that you don't have food bits piling up in inside your your tank yes but we've also talked about this and the importance of not putting food down into your galley tank and one of the ways that you can combat that is just by getting those really fine mesh strainers that fit right there into the drain and then that way it is going to catch a bulk of those food products as you have wiped down and then you're getting ready to wash that can go right into the trash it's going to keep gray tank stink it's one of the ways you can help keep that at bay or galley tank stink at bay. And then also just ensure that you're not building up a ton of goop in that galley tank. And definitely never, never put fats, oils, and coffee grounds or anything that seems kind of like coffee grounds down your kitchen mm -hmm. sink. Uh, those things can really, what happens in, in homes as well, coffee grounds stick to fats and they they block up your plumbing you could you could maybe put your coffee grounds down the black tank maybe but usually it's just best to just throw them in the trash if you have stuff like soup or like stew or like chunky stuff that you don't know what to do with often we will put now not anymore now that we have a composting toilet but in the past we would put that down the toilet or you just strain it just yeah. set a colander in your kitchen sink 
And if you've got to get rid of that stuff, strain it, let the liquids, the broth but roll through <laughs> and then dump the the vegetables and the food product from the soup into the trash can. But usually it would be stuff that we left sit in the fridge way too long and we didn't you want to still, smell. Well, so. I, still, I still do it. You don't want to smell it. I still go and do it because the alternative is even worse. So you just, you pinch your nose for a few seconds, you get through it, you dump it, you move on, you take the trash out. Yeah. So that's sort of care of your black and gray tank. Uh, let's talk about dumping. First thing that's most important is flush, flush, flush. Send as much water down as possible, mm -hmm. uh, especially in your black tank. So you dump that black tank, and then you the, and that's the first thing you dump at a, at a dump station or at your campsite. You want to dump your black tank before you dump anything else, and you want to flush as much water down that as possible. Do you need to do it every time? Not necessarily, uh, but you definitely want to do it uh, at least every other time that you dump your black tank. Uh, I try to do it every time. You, so we have a built-in black tank flush, which is great. Uh, I've, uh, the folks over at the Fit RV did a great test of this and found uh, they've sort of built a, a, a homemade black tank and showed that the built-in tank sprayers are really the best at getting stuff out as opposed to like the ones that you attach to mm -hmm. the valve and spray water up it and stuff. So if you have a built-in tank sprayer, use that, spray as much as you can in there, clean that out, fill it and dump it a few times. Do not close your black tank and let that tank sprayer go and let it keep filling up. I can't tell you how many people I've seen this year wow. do that and forget they had their tank sprayer going and had sewage come out that vent pipe in the roof. And then the sewage is spilling all over your RV and inside as well. Be very careful about that. If, I, if I'm going to fill my black tank up, which I do sometimes uh, with this tank sprayer, I will always set an alarm to remind myself and I will never leave the side of that. So the alarm is in case something distracted me and drew me away. But regardless, I don't set an alarm and walk away and do other stuff. I stay right there. How long do you set the alarm for? Usually five minutes. Okay. But, it, but it depends on the water pressure. So the amount of water coming into your tank can change depending on the campground that sure. you're at. So I try not to overdo it. And uh, I can usually, uh, I can tell by listening, I can tell if the tank sprayer is is starting to spray water that's closer to it. Oh, that's yeah, how, of course. That's how I tell, Sure. Right? Um, again, don't dump your black tank until it's three quarters full. So if it's not full, add water to it before you empty it. Then you always want to add some water back into your black tank. So there is always several gallons of water in it because, again, it's you don't want stuff drying out in there. Right. right? And you on a travel day, you've got out. that little bit of motion happening yeah. in there, which can also help yeah. kind of keep the black tank nice and clean. We never do any of the put ice down your black tank nope. or the geo method and more nope. power to you if you do that sort of stuff. We don't care if our sensors work or not. It's never been something we can trust anyway. We've been pretty fortunate now that we have a composting toilet and we only have liquids in our black tank. But in general, we just sort of let it go. And you can tell when your black tank is about to, it's time to empty when you hear a burping sound. And also we've gotten really good at kind of knowing how many showers can be yeah. had before we're at full, how many times can I wash dishes if I'm not being conservative uh, in a boondocking or state park sort of way with the water? How many times can we get through that before we really need to think about uh, dumping? And th that is all kind of stuff that I think will come to you over time as you get to know your rig better and you get to know what kind of camper you are a little bit better. But that's why we can say we don't pay too much attention to the sensors. I could see though how that that would be to someone who's new to this or new with their RV. That would be really important and you would be hanging yeah. on that every sort of like light sort of you'd be, I don't know. I don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> I can see how sensors would be really yeah. important to you. They're annoying. There you go. Uh, Sorry, the kids were distracting <laughs> me. They're over at the playground. They caught my eye. So then you always want to then dump your gray tank after your black tank. So you're getting 
as much soapy water through as possible. Some good soapy shower water is great to be the last thing yeah. to come through there. So luckily, if you have a galley and then a gray tank, you can do the galley. And then the gray tank that's just full of soapy shower water, that's always the best. Then your, then your sewer hose is fairly clean. clean. You don't even, I actually don't even rinse our sewer hose after doing that because it's literally a ton of soapy water. And I, I have to say, to the clear elbow is really helpful when you're dumping to it's see not what's the going most on. Pleasant <laughs> it's not. Thing and to and look a lot at. of people don't want to use it because that for but. that reason they want to use the the white one or the you know a, a, a an opaque one. But having the clear elbow really it really opens your eyes literally to how much <laughs> stuff continues to be in your black tank. You yes. will you will flush your black tank way more if you have that clear elbow because you'll just keep going until it's clean. And just one more thing about the gray tank because I let and we need to wrap this up yeah. but I want to say that I think it's also really important to put a mesh strainer into or some kind of covering into your shower or tub to collect hair so that because that can also be a really big clogger for the gray tank you know especially if you have family members with longer hair you need to be making sure that that is not going down into the tank and then also for your bathroom sink as well you need to be collecting any it's we have a little mesh one in our bathroom sink there are things that end up in that that i'm like where on earth did these chips of paint come from like <sighs> What were fingernail th clippings if you and have tooth yeah. toothpaste you'd be surprised at how much toothpaste can build up if you have children you need to cover those drains because they're going to go wash their hands and they're going to do things that you don't know anything about until you find it inside the little <laughs> mesh strainer <laughs> uh, all right let's run through some quick problems real quick just okay. to cover them uh smell if you're getting smell from your black tank in particular First thing you want to check is the seal in your toilet. Mm -hmm. It might need to be replaced. If your toilet bowl is not holding water, it needs to be replaced. Your smell is coming up through that and nothing you can do is going to fix that. If water is getting through, the smell is coming through the other way, right? You can use drop-ins to help cover smells that happen when you're, when you're flushing. And that's usually when you're going to smell anything is when you're actually flushing the mm -hmm. toilet. Uh, but again, more water, more water, more water will help get rid, of, get rid of smells. Another thing to check if you're having some serious smell issues is that roof vent. Cobwebs and bugs and stuff can, can really surprisingly clog that tube up really easily. So what, what you can do is spray some water down it with a hose. You take a hose up to your roof or drop a rope down it, something like that, and, and sort of clear that hose line out. At least do that once a year. Uh, real important to do to help keep smells out, but also keep gases out. Mm -hmm. Your gray tank, if your gray tank is smelling, uh, your your all your drains have pee traps in them. So what you're probably smelling is the drain, unless you're smelling it like while you're doing dishes, then sort of like bubbling up can, can be happening. And there are tablets that you can sort of dissolve in your sink that, that will help sanitize a bit your gray tank and make it smell better we've used them to mm -hmm. some su success in in the past uh, but make sure to keep water in those drains sometimes on a drive day that water can bounce around and come out and and maybe you're getting a gray tank smell and gray gray water can smell really gray bad water stinks. so you you might want to after you arrive at a destination put a little water down each of your drains to make sure especially if you have your rv sitting out over a long period of time, mm -hmm. uh, you know, you've got it in storage, you might come back to it and, and those those drains have dried out mm. and you're getting a bad smell in there. So sometimes it's best to put antifreeze in those RV antifreeze, even if it's not winter, because that doesn't evaporate mm -hmm. as, as easily. Um, if you're getting leaks, if you're taking the cap off of your, your, uh, your sewer connection Ruh -roh. and stuff is coming out, before you've opened the valves, then those valves need to be replaced or fixed. Uh, and we have recommended many times in the past that you get a sort of screw-on additional valve Safety. to help mitigate that problem. Because you don't <laughs> know it's happening until you know it's happening. Yeah. And that is the worst. So we will link to the secondary valve that we recommend in the show notes and in the description for the video. 
if you have clog issues, you can use products like Drano technically, but you should avoid them mm -hmm. in the A because they don't work so well, B because they do eat plastic plumbing, whether it's in a house or an RV. Uh, and uh, they really should be used as a last resort. Um, but be careful with those zip strip sewer <gasps> snake things. Yeah. They're, they're great for getting a, a real like hair clog out of a, of a drain of mm -hmm. your shower or your sink. Um, but be careful in a lot of RVs, there is a waterless P trap in the shower mm -hmm. and it's made out of sort of a rubber almost looks like a rubber flat hose and if you put one of those one of those snakes down there one of those zip strips and yank it back out it's going to invert that and and destroy it and so, that's not good so be careful about that um clogs are just best to just avoid as much as possible because they're really hard to deal with there's so much to talk about <laughs> i feel like we've been talking about this for four thousand years finally sensor issues uh your sensors in your RV are terrible and yeah it's just going to be awful so don't worry about them just yeah just we'll link to bye the bye yeah the scientific study Jason recently <laughs> did on our tanks and the sensors and everything you can see that in the that's it for our conversation about <laughs> your tanks we're going to take a break and we're going to come back <sighs> and we're going to talk about our tanks for our tanks week. <laughs> let's keep talking about tanks we'll be how right much back. fun <laughs> Chances are you've seen them on the road. That's because Blue Ox has been designing and manufacturing some of the best towing products in the industry. Blue Ox is everywhere, highways, campgrounds, anywhere you find people traveling in the great outdoors. Blue Ox produces award-winning tow bars and base plates, plus a full line of weight distributing hitches and a new lineup of adjustable ball mounts. With Blue Ox, towing doesn't have to be a drag. To learn more about how Blue Ox can make your travel adventures even more stress-free, visit BlueOx.com. Okay, it is time to check the level of our tanks. Jason, what is in your stinky, slinky black tank uh, this week? Well, my black tank is another sad one this week. Um, oh. We lost my grandmother, Cleo, uh, mm. this week. This is the third grandparent, if you've been counting, that... <laughs> between Abby and I, we yeah. have, have lost this year. So it's been sort of a well, rough year for us on that front. No, I I mean, I don't want to get technical, but we lost your grandfather okay. on Halloween of it, last I, year, but in the last I, year. I, I meant in the last year. The, I yeah, I, not yes, the, yes. yeah, in the last, yeah. yeah. It's It's been really, it's a season of life that's real hard. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, it, Cleo was, Cleo was a great woman. She, she is. She had a lot of kids and a lot of grandkids, <laughs> and um, I always loved going to their house and uh, and I always even in her older years hanging out with our our kids when her when that family would all get up to Michigan and and we had yeah. these sort of like mini family reunions up there. She was always such a joy to be around. Um, oh, she loves loves kids loved them just loved to watch those little ones running around up there yeah. in michigan i mean she lived to be 96 years yeah, old which and is I, wonderful I'm, you know she'll be back with her, with pete now who has been uh who's been gone for a long time. i think 15 years or so now mm -hmm. so um she's lived without her husband for a long time so uh, i'm sad to see her go but my black tank really is is this was a it, tough one. This, the, this. My, it, it's the way, and between her and 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 my grandfather uh, and your grandmother, this country, uh, we have a lot of work to do in taking care of the elderly. We we yeah. just do not do right by uh, by our elderly folks. Yeah. Our all three of our grandparents that have passed this year had difficult times in those last days that were very, very expensive. All three uh, had the financial wherewithal to afford it. Yeah. I cannot imagine what it is like when you don't. All three had uh, family members around to really help manage it, many family members to help manage it. I yeah. cannot imagine what it is like when you are alone in that in that time. Uh, I it, it's it, it it was rough for all three of them. Uh, none of them were a, a real peaceful situation, and um, 
I, I think it's it's really unfortunate, and we need to really sort of step back and take a look at at, at how we take care of our elderly in their their final days because it's it's sad. It's been a tough season. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So all right. So Jay. let me flip it around to something. Yeah. It's completely different that and is enjoyable. In your fresh tank. So I, I love that we you know we're back home with family and I, I we we we've been talking a lot about this lately the sort of nostalgia we're having being back in <laughs> yeah. midwestern towns and loving it and yeah. and part of that is coming uh, from actually just watching about a lot of midwestern towns we've been watching this show my dad has turned us <laughs> on to this my dad <laughs> wants to watch it anytime we're 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 there yeah. uh the show called john mcgivern's main streets it, it it's this guy it, it's on some fox affiliates across the country uh, and a couple others but you can also find it on youtube uh it, it takes me back to sort of my my youth not having cable watching pbs all saturday yeah. and sort of watching this old house and stuff like that but this guy just goes around to different quaint towns where they have sort of main street type communities and in the midwest yeah he stays in the midwest yeah. which is really where you find main street kind of usa right. so he's been to galena a lot, a lot of Illinois, Iowa, yes. Indiana, Wisconsin. Wisconsin. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it's just, it's so lovely. We were just watching the episode on LeClaire. And uh, gosh, I've been coming to this area with you now for over 15 years. And we've never been to LeClaire. Never been to LeClaire. <laughs> Didn't really even know LeClaire was a thing. And then we watched this episode well, and now I'm obsessed with getting to LeClaire. Like, it, I cannot wait to go. And he's super corny, and it's he the is, whole, it's very cheese, but it's also very professionally done and well written and stuff like well that. Well written, too. well researched, yeah. uh, well shot. I will say he is operating on a a hyper sort of level. The man that has some energy. He he's got energy, <laughs> but it's very. I I watch it, and sometimes I'm not quite sure if he's gonna go off the rails. Like, it's an unpredictable energy where you're like, any second now, John's going to say something that's just going to shock everyone around him. And then he's going to go, oh, huh? Maybe he does Was off that? camera often. <laughs> Uh, but oh, I do love they can do. We cut that out. They do lots of behind the scenes <laughs> stuff too. And so it's real. It's, it's, it's just a real, lot of fun. Real it's, fun half hour TV show. And, yeah. And you should watch it if you want to sort of have that sort of time to just sort of veg out and get away. Well, and also to be inspired to travel the Midwest and not look at it as uh, a section of the country where you go from you know, I got to get to the Rockies. So I got to go through all these states to get there, or I'm trying to get up to, you know, the Northeast. There is this, the middle section of our country really does have some very quaint and wonderful main streets and towns to go through with incredible food scenes and, and community. And um, it's been a real joy watching that show. All right. What's in your black tank this week? Okay. Listen, so <sighs> This is this is bad, and it is ridiculous on so many levels. I don't know how many of you have seen this. About three days ago, a and this word is not um, an overreaching description. A brawl <laughs> broke out in the Magic Kingdom at Disney World. A brawl, y'all. Like it was wild. I just saw some of the footage of it that was taken on a cell phone today. And these people have done lost their minds. Okay. I don't. And what was it over? Okay. So it, I have had a very, very good laugh over this. I know that thankfully no one was seriously hurt. Someone was taken to the hospital for a pretty good cut on their chin. Uh, some people were arrested uh, reports, and I can't really confirm all of this, but several outlets, including the very um, reputable Walt Disney World News Today, has reported that an entire family has been forever banned from the park and was required to leave immediately. This happened at PhilharMagic, okay? I don't, for those of you <laughs> that know the Magic Kingdom, it's a show. It's a show. It's a 10 minute it's a show movie screen show. That can <laughs> seat like 400 people all at once. No, I looked it up. It's 500. Okay. It can, it can seat 
500 people. I believe that all of this, I believe that Genie Plus has broken all of our spirits so it, so in it, this park. it was a disagreement about uh, line cutting. So a family. At a show. <laughs> so there were two families involved. This Two big families, clearly on those big family trips, like one family was decked out in all matching outfits. One family was in line, queued up for Philhar Magic. And one member realized that they had left their phone in one of the um, electric scooters that you can get. And they didn't want to leave their phone just exposed like that. So they left to go get it. This is the story. Okay. Like, again, this could change. This is an ever-developing story. And it could change at any moment. Uh, right. I'll bring you the breaking news as it, as it happens. This person is alleging that they left to go get their phone. When they returned, they were trying to go back to their party that was up ahead. There was another family that clearly had just had enough that day, I don't, collectively as a group, and would not let this person pass, was uh, shoving at this person. Uh, uh, things got intense, I guess. I don't know what happened in between all of that. They would not let them rejoin their party. Perhaps this person was but, allowed to. But what happened was when everyone left Philhar Magic, there wasn't enough magic to calm this storm. Oh, so it happened after the show. It so happened, they watched the yeah, show you and know then how it happened you come afterwards. Out, so you know how you come out yeah, of Philhar Magic yeah. and you got to go through that gift shop? I saw shop? where it was. Right. Yeah. So they come out of Philhar Magic and the... Uh, family that had had the member unable to join or had been accosted by this other family approached that family, confronted that family, and those two families just went to town on each other. And when you say family, like each family was like 15 people plus. Large families. I don't know how big, but I'm not talking like me and you and the kids. I'm talking like we're here for a big family reunion. We're here for the big family vacation. So we got Uh, grandma and grandpa and, you know, grown a adults. Okay. These, I'm not talking like some teenagers going after each other. These are grown a adults. No, these are parents. They had kids. That I, I, I can't, you know, what, I, it annoyed me when we were there and like people would like, somebody would get in line and then people would keep coming to join them. Like they're the placeholder. Like you can't do that. But this is, this is a show well, that there's never more than a 15 minute wait for max. And maybe this Because it's just the length of the show. No, listen, maybe this time of year, there's a little bit longer maybe, wait. Maybe, maybe you got to wait a half an hour. You know, things, it's busy. It's busy yeah. season. I just, I cannot. I mean, I had, I have had a very good laugh. It's very sad, but I've had a very good laugh because when I first read this article, I expected it to be like Space Mountain or Seven Dwarfs Mine Train or, <sighs> you know, Peter Pan because people get real crazy over at Peter Pan. Something Phil, with a long line. Phil <laughs> Har Magic. <laughs> All right. What's in your fresh tank? <laughs> All right. So my fresh tank this week goes to a coffee company called Hikers Brew. They sent us their sample pack, which we've been enjoying. And, you know, I really love being oh, able. Oh, that's why the coffee's been so good the last yeah, couple days. Yeah, yeah, right? So um, I really enjoy getting to find uh, new coffee companies that are out there that are really sort of speaking to the outdoor enthusiasts. And what I love about these is they come in these um, compost uh, friendly packaging that's vacuum sealed as well. And it's going to make about two to four cups. Okay. It's already ground out. Um, oh, so it's, it's like separated in portions. Yeah. And so depending on the strength of how you like your coffee, you're okay. going to get two to four cups out of this. We get four cups out of it. It's very, very strong. I think if you did two cups, you'd be drinking Dave Trebu coffee, which <laughs> is sludgy mud. Um, so I also, the packaging is very fun. They have names like Van Life and Red Rocks and Mile Marker, and it's all themed. But what's really great is let's say you are headed into a national park. You want to catch that sunrise And you can take one of these packets, you can grab your little camp stove or whatever, and you can go and you can get into the park and you can make yourself a really nice cup of coffee with your French press or your AeroPress or whatever. 
Does it kind of, so can it kind of work like a tea bag? Like you pull it no, back out? No, so it's not a tea bag. It's going to be ground coffee. Okay. So what you're going to do is you're going to have this packet and you're going to tear it open. And then you're going to have okay. ground gotcha. coffee in there. Gotcha. It's really portable, but it's really, really, really good coffee. Okay. It's not the, you know, Starbucks like little... It's not instant. You, it's not, it's instant. not that it's instant. No, you're gonna coffee. you're gonna yeah. actually brew it up. And I just think that you know if you're backpacking anything, in spending a day in the park, and you want to just get out there, and then you just make this cup of coffee, or you're boondocking too. Even it's, I'm really really enjoying it. We've tried out several. They've got like s'mores flavored hazelnut, a, a medium roast, a dark roast, a vanilla, a caramel. Um, They've got a little bit of something for everybody. So I do really recommend them. I really love being able to test out new coffee from small businesses all across the country. So this is Hikers Brew is the name of it. I will put a link in the description or the show notes. And thanks to them for wanting to send this to us and and bringing them to our attention. I will for sure be picking up more of this. That's it for this week's episode. Oh, we're done talking about tanks, unless <laughs> we mentioned something today and you would like to go over to our Amazon store and take a look at the sewer hoses we're using or the secondary valve or any of the other stuff, the mesh uh, strainers. We have all of that over in our Amazon store, amazon.com slash shop slash RV miles. You can go over there and see the products that we recommend to help keep stink at bay, things like that. Want to remind y'all that if you would like to talk to us and we would love to talk to you, come over to the RV Miles Facebook group. There's over 12,000 people now in this group and we just have a really good time. In addition to getting to talk to Jason and I, everyone in there is always sharing great campground recommendations, asking questions, sharing their knowledge. It's just, it's a really, really wonderful group and we would love to have you a part of it. All right, we'll see you next week. Stay healthy, stay fresh, and keep logging those RV miles. Bye, everybody.